100 watts. All right, I am stoked about this. I just got this delivered. It's the Renogy Premium 400 kit. It's got the Rover 40 amp charge controller, four 100 watt uh, glass panels. These are the, the rigid panels, not the flexible panels. I decided to go with these uh, because of their proven performance and reliability. Let's see what's inside. Well, I know what's inside, but let's open it up and take a look. Check to make sure there's no damage. UPS managed to deliver them in one piece. I will test each panel uh, voltage and um, make sure that everything's working properly. So this kit uh, has the uh, 40 amp Rover charge controller. This is an MPPT charge controller and really nice quality and it also comes with the BT1 Bluetooth monitoring system so this is the module that plugs into the charge controller that gives you your uh, readout on a phone app uh, of your battery voltage, state of charge, things like that. Comes with all the cables that we need. Um, got power cable. MC4 connectors and adapters. Got a nice inline fuse. And I believe 20 feet of cable, which I've already got cables up on the roof. So um, I might end up running an extra set up into that uh, weather tight junction box. Uh, inline MC4 fuse. Wow, 10 amp. 1,000 volt. We've got our cable for... Oh, temperature? I'll read through all this and make sure. Some mounting brackets. Everything's packed really well. These must be the Z brackets. Let's go ahead and open this up. Yeah, these are all of our Z brackets and mounting screws. Very nice. like it. So a couple of things that uh, I did have to purchase separately uh, that isn't required but I wanted to have it in the system. Uh, I purchased a, a shunt so I can have monitoring for all of my usage, all of my battery or 12 volt power usage uh, as well as uh, obviously what's coming in and what's going out. Um, so that, that will be coming uh, separately. I have, what else did I purchase separately? Oh, my, I, I did purchase some additional fusing and breakers uh, for inline uh, before and after the charge controller. 
So if I want to isolate the solar panels, I can do that. If I want to isolate the charge controller, I can do that. If I want to isolate anything after, you know, downstream, I can do that as well. So redundancy in, in breakers uh, also allows you to, you know, turn something off and isolate something so you can work on it safely. All right, so here's the panel specs. You guys can pause that to get uh, all that information. So it says each panel weighs 14.1 pounds. I'm gonna go ahead and throw these on the scale and see if that weight is accurate. Uh, here's my old 100 watt panel, right? It's a Renogy as well. And here's the new ones, the new, more efficient panels. Here's the specs on the old panel. You can compare that to the specs on the new panel. So this panel's about 16 and a half pounds. Right, so this is pretty basic. Got the little Z brackets and my stainless steel hardware. These are 10 millimeter nuts and bolts. Um, just gonna go ahead and get all my brackets put on. Uh, I've already got one set up and three more to go. So for my mounts and my mounting to the roof of the camper, uh, I am only using adhesive. So I've got the Cicaflex and I'm going to cut some of these blocks uh, about five and a half inch by three inch. And the blocks will be uh, glued down with Cicaflex adhesive to the, to the roof. And then the solar panels will screw into that with more Cicaflex, and then of course sealant over the top. Uh, for the sealant over the top and all that kind of stuff, I'm using, I'm not using any Dicor products. I'm using my leftover Crazy Seal Mastic patch, uh, the caulking, and then two coats of the roof membrane. Uh, and that'll go over the, you know, over the brackets on the solar panels. This is the uh, Cica Sika bond that I'm using. I'm gonna make sure I document my weights. So these mounting blocks are uh, three and a half pounds. 13.4 uh, ounces per set. All right, there's the 400 watts mounted. Got them covered with cardboard right now until all the sealant dries and then uh, in a couple of days I'll go up and get the wiring done. I've got room for two more uh, 100 watt panels so if I wanted to put two more I've got room to do it so one just in front of the max air vent between the max air vent and my escape hatch and then one right here so there's room for expansion i've got a 40 amp charge controller so this is good so i still got this 100 watt panel uh, that i'm going to probably just keep as a ground mount panel and then i have my solar suitcase my renogy 100 watt solar suitcase. So I, I have an additional 200 watts that I could deploy uh, from the ground if I'm parked under shade or something like that. So I, I don't think I'll mount this one up on the roof. I think I'll just uh, hang on to it. Um, at the very least, I'll use my solar suitcase as a ground deploy. Now on my electrical box, uh, tray, whatever you want to call it, um, I've got my I've got my charge controller mounted on the outside of the box for a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to separate it from the rest of the stuff. And two, um, that's where my lines come in, uh, in the camper, you know, in, in that corner right there, that's where they come down. And, um, 
so that'll be this corner when it's actually in in the uh, camper that'll make good connection there and then I've got my, my hardwired plug for my charger uh, that, that this will plug into and then it's hardwired uh, to the bus bars so that's what that is what this guy right here is for so I can just plug in run my charger I'm waiting on some lugs I've got uh, you know all this this great big number two cable um, that I'm gonna some of these wires are aren't gauged right so this I set up just for testing for a proof of concept that it would work and uh, I've got one more catastrophic fuse going in here um, for the positive connection to the battery before it goes into the bus bar or actually I take that back before it goes into the uh, cutoff switch you'll have uh, uh, from the battery into the the catastrophic switch uh, breaker into the cutoff switch and then out to the bus bar so every line is fused um, that's really how it should be at the very least you should have some you know inline fuses um, but you know, I like I like having these resettable breakers and then also the catastrophic um, fuses just in case. You know, these are high amperage fuses. So just in case, you know, something really goes haywire, it will uh, it'll blow that fuse before anything bad happens. Uh, hit that thumbs up button and uh, throw me a comment if you've uh, you know got some stuff to say about the way I'm wiring this up. Um, the, I'll, I'll make a, a couple of notes here and uh, uh, about uh, venting and airflow on this box. I am planning on mounting uh, a couple of things. One, I'm planning on mounting a computer fan on the back side. I'll have an air gap on the back side between the camper wall. Um, so I'm going to drill a hole and, and mount a computer fan so I can get airflow uh, all the way around the, the box. Uh, and inside here, um, you know, this three quarter of an inch gap is probably sufficient, but I would like to at least have a little bit more airflow in here. Uh, and then also in the winter time, um, I'll be doing a little bit of testing on uh, keeping this um, lithium iron phosphate battery warm. And uh, I'll be doing that with a 12 volt electric blanket. Um, you know, just one of those 40 watt or 45 watt electric blankets uh, over the top of the batteries and I'm just doing one battery for now uh, I've got two more batteries coming and uh, they'll be wired up so I'll be able to you know keep all those batteries warm in very cold temperatures you never want to try to charge these uh, below 32 degrees what happens is if, if you are charging below 32 degrees you can get um, something happens called lithium plating and it will destroy these batteries uh, just to where they become inefficient. So to take care of this system, I I'd wanna make sure that I, I keep the batteries warm, probably somewhere right around 40 degrees, 45 degrees uh, in, in the coldest temperatures. And then, you know, 56 to 75 degrees, uh, 56 to 76 degrees uh, in, in the warmer months. That would be ideal. And well, that's another reason why I mounted my, my charge controller out here. I've got this heat sink on the back of the solar charge controller. And these get hot. These can get up to about 125 to 130 degrees, uh, the heat sink itself. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to separate that and create some airflow uh, with some fresh air with a, a computer fan. You know, a low draw 12 volt computer fan. All right, so here's my wiring uh, set up for testing. I'm going to get my second battery installed and my solar.